Hey guys, this is the introduction to our press break series. We're going to be showing you the Tommy Industrial 33 ton press break. It is a 5,000 pound machine. It's five foot uh, wide bending capability. Um, it's a great option for small shops. Guys just starting out, they have great financing options. So we're going to dive into a lot of the individual components and processes, how to program it, how to run it, how to make good parts with it. I've been really happy with it. Uh, you just, you really got to know how the thing works and this series should show you everything you need to know to hit the ground running with this press brake. Here's the controller for the machine. It is an E21 Eston controller. Pretty simple controller actually. You, you input your X values for your back gauge, your Y values for bend angle. More Y value correlates to more bend, less Y value relates to less bend. We'll get into that. Single program mode where you just want to bend one part maybe a whole bunch of times. You just run it here. You can get into a program mode where you can bend up to, I think you can make 25 bends in each program and you can do 40 programs with 25 bends a piece in it. So that's pretty cool. We'll go through some of that in another video. And toggle through all the different values that you can change. We'll go through that in another video. We'll give it some power and turn the pump on. Put it in run mode. We'll go down, hold, come back up. It's got a light curtain here that if the beam is broken, it will not let the ram go down. You move the obstruction, the ram will move. It comes stock with the upper tooling you see here and then this four-way lower die that has multiple V sizes for your different metal thicknesses. So it's got these quick change tool holders. So boom, you, you do that and then you can slide the tooling out and slide your other your other tooling around, take one out. Uh, I have a bunch of other tooling I have for this thing that I can swap in. So these make it really quick to just adjust things, pop it back in place. Maybe the part I had had a spot in the middle that I didn't want bent. And I wanted it bent on either side. I can make that gap in these guys. We'll get more into, uh, into actual tooling and how to's on bending processes later. but. The tooling it comes with is actually pretty nice. I'm actually quite pleased with it. So here's inside. It shows the, the back gauge itself. I think they've changed some designs as they keep selling these to make the, the presses better. So I don't know if everything you see on this machine will completely be the same as on yours. Uh, but everything over, for the most part is going to be very similar how it works, how it operates. I'm powering my press brake with an ADX10 rotary phase converter from American Rotary that I stuffed inside of here. That works great for, uh, for guys that only have single phase in the, in the shop. These presses come standard, uh, three phase, 220. So that was really easy actually to wire up and install and get this press brake running. So you can get one running anywhere you have 220 power, really. It's got this nice big uh, Siemens motor on it with the hydraulic pump. I believe this is a four, five horsepower motor on this machine. Really smooth, I'm really pleased with that. About 30 gallons of hydraulic fluid. You can load it up in the top here. It does have a filter in it. And that pumps through, so this whole this whole thing here is a, is a tank, so it holds a lot of hydraulic fluid, should, should uh, keep the thing running for a long time. It's got grease zerks on all the bearings and slides, here's one, and then on the inside there's, there's zerk fittings for the actual slides. Uh, I keep, a, I keep a, a grease gun right on top of the machine and it's actually got the chart right here. Tells you all the lubrication. Spots. This is tooling that I have adapted to this machine. You can order different tooling from the manufacturer. If 
if what you see on the machine here will not do the type of work you need done, you can call Tommy and just order with your machine. You can order finger dies and all different sorts of press brake tooling um, to add on to your order. But these are dies that I have adapted. I made some adapters to fit the Tommy Industrial style tooling, the European style tooling. And then this is, uh, this is some Wheela, Wheela tooling that I've adapted to fit on it. Here's the electrical cabinet. This is one of my favorite parts on the machine. It's really nicely done. So the machine also comes with lifting points that are, are centered right on the, the center of gravity on the machine. Most of the weight's in the front here. So you lift from these and the machine will lift nice and level. Uh, it's also got some holes back here. The, the machine does weigh, this one in particular does weigh 5,000 pounds. So make sure you have a, a rigging company set up to put this in place or someone with uh, some big equipment. It is heavy, it's, it's, uh, it's gonna be hard to fit in a small two, -store, or two stall garage. So this is what I like to call my lift kit for the machine. I built this little setup to raise this six inches. I'm six foot two, so I like my work surfaces a little higher than uh, a lot of things. So uh, some quarter inch wall square tube and some plates, welded it all together. It was a nice system to anchor it to the floor too. Uh, you, you should always anchor these machines to the floor with uh, concrete inserts or whatever. Uh, it'll hold everything true. It's got these leveling pads here, uh, this bolt and everything. So I, I sat the, ma the machine up and it's, it's, uh, it's level on every plane that I put the level on. So it's, it's good and set up right. If you just set these on the floor, you're gonna have inconsistencies in your bends and not be happy with it because as heavy as these things are, they will flex around. So it's really important to get it sucked down to the floor, leveled, and set up right off the bat. Comes with this uh, two-stage pedal. It's got a, it's got an up and a down, as well as an emergency stop button on top of it. So if you get into a hairy spot, you can just hit that and the machine will shut down. It also has three run modes with the pedal. It is in semi-automatic. So you hit the down button, it comes down, it holds for a second, it comes back up. You can also put it in single mode where you would go down and then you would have to hit the up pedal to go back up. Down with the down pedal, up with the up pedal. And semi-automatic where it was, you just hold the down pedal, it goes down, keep holding it, it comes back up. And then you can put it in full automatic where it will just keep running. If you had some part where you were just bending these all day or maybe you put a, a punch in the machine or something like that, the thing will just keep going up and down and up and down all on its own. I pretty much just stay in semi-automatic mode all the time. Hold the down, pedal comes down, then it goes back up, and then you hit it again for your next part. All the doors on the machine have these little sensors. So if the door opens while the pump is running, it will shut the pump off. So. One thing I always think when I have an issue, you know, the machine's not going up and down. Are the doors closed? Nine times out of 10, I have a door open somewhere on the machine, and that's the reason I'm getting all frustrated that it won't operate. It's a good one to remember, the little safety switches. And then also, on these machines, it's going to come with some sort of downstroke speed change adjustment and the upstroke stop adjustment. Your machine, like I mentioned before, as they keep building these, they keep improving them. Uh, this may look slightly different on yours, but it should be a similar concept. For this, you, you may not want the ram to come all the way up. You might only be bending a part that's small, so you don't need it to travel the full like four inches all the way up every time. You might just want it to go up a little and then you bend your part and it goes up a little. Um, or you can make it go up all the way. And then for the downstroke speed change, this is very important for your different thicknesses of metal. Um, you know, you, for, for quarter inch, 
this is going to come down and then you want this to slow down just as it touches the material and then it will come to that slower speed for the bending speed so it will wrap it down and then bend slowly you need to adjust this for different thicknesses um, or if, if you had it set for something thin and then put thicker metal in the, the, the ram is going to come down and slam into that thicker metal bef you know, before it gets to that slower speed. So you got to remember to change that. And then especially if you swap out tooling, if you put different height tooling in, different height tooling for the lower or the upper, you're going to have to mess with these more. So uh, aside from the, the door stop sensors, this is the other thing that tends to frustrate people. They'll forget to adjust these, they'll change something out, and then they'll be all upset that, you know, it's not going up and down, what's wrong? Well, this is probably in the wrong position now for what you're doing, where you set things up, so you just, you just loosen these knobs and you can slide it up and down, and then uh, tighten that back up, and you're good to go. Also, for, for rotating the lower die, since it is five foot and it's pretty heavy, um, it, they come with these lifting chains and you just simply run the ram all the way down into the die. You wrap the chain on both sides around these little uh, knobs that stick out the side. And then we can lift the tooling up it will the ram will do all the lifting for us and then we can just rotate the lower die to the v size that we want for you know if we're if you're bending quarter inch you need a bigger v size than if you're bending 18 gauge you know well hey guys uh hopefully that little walk around gave you a, a quick idea about the machine uh we'll, we'll like i said dive deeper into the specifics we'll get into tooling setup how to adjust everything, how to square parts up, how to uh, know your, your, your bend deductions, things like that, and some other videos. But uh, I just wanted to say, I think this is a really great machine for guys starting out. Uh, they have 45 ton, they have, they have some monstrous ones, uh, like 200 ton, maybe more, I think. Uh, just great big ones. Uh, but for small shops that just need to start bending some parts, I think it's a great option. It's super repeatable. Um, I'm actually really impressed at how repeatable it is. I think it's I think it's a great tool to take any small shop to that next level. You know, you've got a plasma table already, or you're doing laser work. You can snag one of these. Uh, you know, my payment is really affordable. I've been I've been really happy with it, and I can't wait to show you guys a lot more information on it we'll really dive deep into you know bending some crazy stuff up I get a lot of weird jobs so it's it's a lot of fun to figure out the puzzles and put the right tooling in to, to get that job out the door so, thanks for tuning in and uh, let us know what you guys think if there's other parts of the machine you'd like me to talk about go into leave it in the comments you know and as as usual do the the like subscribe share you know if you want um it'll it'll help us get more products to do this with and and keep everything going so thanks